What makes hyperelectric flight so game-changing is that the face of flight will never look the same. This is a strange time for the skies. Airports stand quieter than they once did. Their runways marked by long pauses between departures. The pandemic forced us to stop, and in that stillness, we learned new ways to meet, to work, to connect, without crossing oceans. Some embraced the change. Others began to miss the hum of engines, the feeling of lifting away from the ground. But now, another truth waits above the clouds. Our way of flying leaves a heavy mark on the air we all share. And if we want to keep the sky, we must learn to change it. The Fragile State of Aviation When the pandemic swept across the world, the airline industry entered one of the most fragile moments in its history. Passenger numbers collapsed overnight. Planes sat parked in neat rows along abandoned tarmac. Entire fleets were grounded, not by mechanical failure, but by a sudden absence of people willing or able to fly. As months turned into years, a subtle shift occurred. Business travel, once the lifeblood of many carriers, began to fade. Virtual meetings became the new normal. Executives signed deals from home offices instead of airport lounges. Some travelers returned as restrictions lifted, but the habits formed in that pause have been slow to fade. Yet the human pull toward exploration remains. People still long to see other cities, other landscapes, other lives. The challenge is no longer simply about getting from one place to another. It is about doing so without worsening the crises that already weigh on the planet. For aviation to survive, not just economically, but morally, it must evolve. The days of ignoring the environmental cost of flight are ending. The question now is not whether change is coming, but whether it will arrive in time to keep our skies open. The problem with aviation emissions. Every plane that lifts from the runway leaves more than a fading roar behind it. In its wake comes a trail of invisible gases and microscopic particles, drifting into the atmosphere, where they linger far longer than the sound of departure. Carbon dioxide is the most familiar culprit. Each ton release traps. Heat in the air, inching global temperatures upward. But it is not alone. Nitrous oxides, formed in the searing heat of jet combustion, rise into the upper atmosphere where they damage the delicate balance that shields us from harmful radiation. Tiny particulate matter, too small to see, floats into the air we breathe, seeding health problems far from the flight paths that created them. Unlike cars or buses, airplanes cannot easily hide their emissions behind filters or catalytic converters. Their engines are designed for raw power and efficiency, not for cleaning their exhaust. And the sheer speed at which they operate means pollutants are released at altitudes where their effects can be even more potent. This is why aviation's footprint looms so large in the climate conversation. To preserve the freedom of flight, the industry must find ways to shrink that shadow without grounding the dreams of those who still look up. Electric flight dreams and limitations. In recent years, electric planes have become a symbol of hope, a promise that the roar of engines could be replaced by a cleaner, quieter hum. In theory, they offer a perfect answer. No onboard combustion, no exhaust trails, and the possibility of running entirely on renewable energy. For short, regional flights, this vision is already taking shape. Small electric aircraft are being tested, some even carrying passengers over modest distances with remarkable efficiency. But when the journey stretches across oceans or continents, the dream begins to falter. The challenge lies in energy density, the amount of power a battery can store for its weight. Jet fuel contains far more energy per kilogram than the best batteries we have today. For a long-haul plane, the battery needed to match that power would be impossibly heavy, robbing space from passengers and cargo while reducing efficiency. 
This doesn't mean electric flight has no place in aviation's future. It simply means it cannot yet be the only answer. For the vast distances that define global travel, a different approach is needed. One that blends the strengths of today's fuels with the cleaner promise of electric propulsion. And that's where hybrids come in. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. The Hybrid Electric Vision Hybrid electric planes offer a middle path between what we have and what we hope to build. They take the high energy density of liquid fuels, the same quality that makes jet fuel so hard to replace, and pair it with electric propulsion systems that can be cleaner, quieter, and more adaptable. In a hybrid setup, fuel isn't burned directly in multiple engines. Instead, it powers a central generator, which produces electricity to drive ducted fans or propellers. This separation between combustion and propulsion opens a door to something aviation has rarely attempted, controlling and cleaning the exhaust before it ever touches the sky. With the right technology, harmful byproducts like nitrous oxides and particulates can be filtered or transformed into harmless gases. It's an idea borrowed from ground vehicles where catalytic converters have been standard for decades, but adapted for the unique demands of high-altitude flight. The goal is not just to reduce carbon emissions through sustainable fuels, but to address the full spectrum of aviation's environmental impact. In this vision, the familiar sound of flight remains, but the air it moves through carries far less burden. And some researchers believe this future is closer than it seems. Lessons from the E-Fan X Before these ideas took shape at MIT, another project tested the waters of hybrid aviation. The E-Fan X was a collaboration between Airbus, Rolls-Royce, and Siemens, a bold experiment to replace one of a plane's four conventional engines with a large electric ducted fan. Power came from an onboard generator burning liquid fuel, a design meant to prove that electric propulsion could work at scale. The E-Fan X never reached commercial service, but it marked an important turning point. It showed that hybrid systems could integrate into existing aircraft designs without rewriting the entire rulebook. Engineers learned how to manage the heavy electrical components, how to distribute power in flight, and how to keep systems stable in the demanding conditions of high-altitude travel. Still, the E-Fan X had its limits. Three of its engines continued to burn fuel traditionally, sending unfiltered exhaust directly into the atmosphere. The experiment proved feasibility, but not the full promise of cleaner skies. In that gap between what was tested and what is truly needed, the seeds of more ambitious concepts began to grow. Concepts that would bring all propulsion under one cleaner system. The MIT concept. MIT's proposal takes the lessons from earlier experiments and pushes them further. In their design, every bit of propulsion comes from electric ducted fans, no conventional jet engines at all. The liquid fuel on board is burned only in a central generator, hidden deep within the fuselage. This generator produces the electricity that keeps the fans turning. The difference is in what happens next. Because all combustion takes place in one contained location, the exhaust can be routed through an after-treatment system before it's released into the atmosphere. This system works much like a catalytic converter in a car, using rare metals like platinum, palladium, and rhodium to trigger chemical reactions. Harmful nitrous oxides are broken down into harmless nitrogen and oxygen. Particulates can be trapped or neutralized. MIT's researchers believe this setup could cut nitrous oxide emissions by as much as 95%. And when paired with synthetic, carbon-neutral fuels, it could drastically shrink aviation's total climate footprint. It is still a concept, tested in simulations and lab environments, not yet in the open sky.
but it points to a future where flight's impact is measured in destinations reached, not in damage left behind. Real World Progress and Zonum Aero While MIT's vision remains on paper, others have tried to bring similar ideas into the real world. Zonum Aero, founded by an MIT alumnus, has been developing a series hybrid aircraft that shares key elements with the MIT concept. Their design uses electric ducted fans for thrust, small onboard batteries as a buffer for peak power demands, and a gas turbine generator in the hold to keep the system running over long distances. The approach is promising, but progress has been far from smooth. Zonum Aero once had strong backing from industry giants like Boeing and JetBlue, yet those partnerships eventually unraveled. The company says the setback wasn't due to technical failure, but to funding and investment challenges, a reminder that even the most elegant engineering depends on the messy realities of business and trust. Still, the core idea survives. Whether under Zonum Aero's banner or another's, the pursuit of cleaner, long-range hybrid aircraft continues. Innovation in aviation often moves slowly, but each attempt, successful or not, adds another layer of knowledge, bringing the dream of sustainable flight one step closer to takeoff. One of the first questions about any hybrid aircraft is weight. Adding a generator, electric systems, and an exhaust after-treatment unit sounds like a recipe for heavier planes and higher fuel use. But MIT's calculations suggest otherwise. Factoring in the mass of these systems, the aerodynamic penalties, and the pressure drops in the engine, they estimate the design would require only about 0.5% more fuel for the same journey. One day, the sound of a departing plane may be the same, a steady rise in pitch, the rush of air, but what follows will be different. No heavy trail in the atmosphere, no silent drift of toxins far above our heads. Just the memory of distance closing and horizons drawing nearer. Hybrid electric technology will not solve every problem in the skies, but it may give us the time we need to keep searching for what comes next. If we can make the air cleaner as we move through it, perhaps the sky will remain ours to share.